This week on a very special episode of The Watchman Show, we are standing at one of the most notorious killing fields in human history. This is Treblinka. We are in Poland at the site of the Nazi death camp where close to one million people, one million, were murdered. It's hard to wrap your head around it all, but today we will do just that with our good friend, Holocaust survivor Irving Roth, and some very special guests who will show you how out of the ashes of the Holocaust, the Jewish people rose again. The people of Israel live from tragedy to triumph. We're bringing you the inside story of Treblinka today, right here on The Watchman, only with Christians United for Israel, and only right here on TBN. We are standing at the site of one of the most efficient killing machines in human history. This is Treblinka. Next to Auschwitz, which you survived, this was the most notorious killing field of the Nazi regime. The Nazis leveled Treblinka. There's not a lot of signs of the camp here now, but set the scene for us a bit. Tell us where we are and why it's so important. We are in the most efficient, or at least one of the most efficient killing fields ever created by mankind. All that happened here is Jews were brought here under the pretext they're being resettled. There was a train station. There was a train schedule just to make sure there's no panic. But the moment you arrived here, the process began. Immediately, the gassing, the burning. You got off that train a few yards from where we're standing right now, Irving, and you were literally pushed, pushed into the gas chamber. Into the gas chamber. And now you had bodies. You had to burn them. Now they destroyed that completely. There were no huge number of barracks, unlike Auschwitz. You have a huge number because there was also a slave labor camp. Here, nothing. The only few people who really uh, stayed for a period of time are those who were necessary to run it. And the moment the killing was done, it was dismantled. About a year and a half period. Yeah. Uh, summer 1942 to the fall of 1943. That's correct. And during that period, 10,000 people a day were killed. On the average, and So yes. people at home understand that it boggles the mind. 10,000 people a day were killed right here, close to 1 million, uh, up to 900,000 overall right here. In this small space. In this small space. The Nazis, cowards that they are, leveled this site to hide their crimes. But we do have some very moving memorials. Tell us about this stone right here. Uh, it says, never again. I know that. That's English. But there's a few languages there. Tell us about that stone, that memorial. It's very critical. This was accomplished by human beings. This was accomplished by intelligent, bright, educated, sophisticated people. This must never happen again to anyone. This must be a message to the whole world. Man is capable to crimes unimaginable, but they must not happen. So we must understand every aspect, the step-by-step -step process, the whole process by I hate you because of who you are. You don't belong. Step by step, all those signs, I call them signposts along the road to Auschwitz. Never again must we allow this to happen to anyone. Some of these places were little villages with 17 Jews or four Jews, 
but they managed to ferret them out because the Jews had to be destroyed. Irving, as you said, these were some of the most educated people in the entire world, the Germans. When you think in terms of, it began by the Wannsee Conference. So imagine here, you have 30 people sitting around. One third of them has PhDs, doctorates. This is the Wannsee Conference, this, 1942, where the final solution was. And they're sitting there talking about how we're going to take human beings who have done nothing wrong, who live their life, who pay their taxes, who went there about daily business. How are you going to take all of these people and murder them? To set up mechanisms to do that, to worry about the uh, whole process, the details of the transportation, the details of the psychology, all this, just to murder people. Yeah. And the trains came right here, Irving, just a few yards from where we're standing right now. Trains came, uh, Jews were taken off the trains, they were marched to their deaths right beyond these trees right That's here. That's correct, and there's nothing it else was, was It was going. a killing factory, I guess is the best way you could describe it. It's exactly what it was. It's inconceivable to the human mind. And the only way they can do it, and the way they did it, they psychologically said, these are not people. Sure, they look like people, same legs as everybody else, same face, same nose. But no, they're vermin. Think of them as vermin. And that's what makes it possible. For centuries, Jews lived side by side in Germany with non-Jews. Thriving. Absolutely. Assimilated. How do you do that? Well, you do it by demonizing the Jew. And that process is so simple. We see this today, Irving. Uh, we're here at Treblinka now. We're remembering close to one million people who were slaughtered here senselessly. Uh, through that demonization process that you described, it starts from a young age. It started with the Nazi youth at a young age. We see this, I fear, today uh, in, in many places in, in, in the Muslim world, in the Palestinian territories. Not only Palestinian Authority, but Hamas, their official media, painting the Jewish people as subhuman and worthy of death. Yes, and that is, that is what we need to learn. That is why we must study this, the process, the psychology behind it, the methodology, to see how it relates. And they're identically the same. It all begins with words. The Sturmer at the bottom, the Jews are our misfortune. Paintings, cartoons, all that is part and parcel of this transformation. Germany lost World War I because of the Jews. That was Hitler's message. When you speak of the people who are actually hands-on, how about those people who simply had benefits? How about those people who simply said, hey, because the Jews are being destroyed, because they're being shipped out, I can move into a larger apartment. Are they perpetrators? Are they bystanders? I'm not so sure there's such a thing as a bystander. Why is it so important for Christians to know what happened here, to be aware of what happened here at Treblinka, at Auschwitz, and at other sites uh, of the Holocaust? Auschwitz, Treblinka happen as a part of an overall step-by-step -step process. It begins by words. The Jews are our misfortune. You bring those same words into the school system. So the young begin to hate. Of course, the word anti-Semitism is bandied around a lot. Let's step back for a moment. What does that mean? Because the original word that was used in German was Judenhasse the hatred of Jews, and that's what anti-Semitism is. It's pure, unadulterated hatred for no reason at all. I've spoken in schools and other venues where someone would say, well, how do you know there was such a thing as a gas chamber? Because if you would have been actually an eyewitness to the gassing, you wouldn't be here. And so I proceed to explain how we know, how I know. How is it possible that I came to Auschwitz 
in May of 1944 with my grandfather and grandmother and aunt and cousin, and, and suddenly they all disappeared. To where? The tons upon tons upon tons of Zyklon B, poison gas. For what purpose? To kill three roaches? But all facts don't matter. And that is one of the problems. One of the hallmarks, one of the signposts along the way is lies, fabrications. Well, we're not going to omit anything here at Treblinka uh, in our work at Christians United for Israel. We're going to tell the truth, Irving. Thank God we have you to bring it to us. Irving, thank you so much. But we're not done with you. We're going to spend a little bit more time here at Treblinka with you at a very special memorial that you're going to tell us more about in a minute. My pleasure. It's a responsibility that I have. America is at its best when it supports Israel. It is a value deeply ingrained in our national DNA, and it is one that I believe has brought us blessing and bounty from the Lord. But there's a bond that we're tied to Israel and the Jewish people. They are the beacon of hope and democracy in what is a very bad neighborhood. I would argue that if the Middle East had more free enterprise, pro-American democracy, that there are more countries like that in the Middle East, the world would be a lot safer than it is right now. Israel's commitment lights the way for the rest of the Middle East, and indeed for the entire world. And the why begins with the fact that Israel is the only pro-American, free enterprise democracy in the Middle East. That in and of itself is a reason to support them strongly. The protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps, nor should we. This memorial here at Treblinka has very special meaning to you personally. Tell us about Janusz Korczak. When you think of Janusz Korczak, you're talking about the ultimate educator. If you take all the well-known educators of the 19th and 20th century, Piaget and John Dewey and all of them, they did not have as much insight into the child as he did. And in addition to which he loved the children. At the same time, he actually gave his life, literally, to comfort children. He could have left the ghetto. He didn't have to go, even go into the ghetto. He was a well-known individual. There were friends, Polish friends, who were going to save him with no difficulty at all. But he felt as a father, as the protector, he must be there with them. And so he willingly went into the cattle car at the Warsaw Ghetto with the children. 193 children into the cattle car to comfort them. Boy, it's dark. They don't know where they're going. He's with them. This well-respected educator uh, from Poland, like you said, could have, could have escaped that fate. Oh, no difficulty at all. Yeah. In fact, the night before the children were being deported, one of his Polish friends came into the ghetto with papers, so that even though he was alone coming in, two of them were allowed to leave. He berates his friend, saying, how can you ask me? How can a father leave a, ch leave a child to be in a dark place, scared? Who's going to come? Separated him? from their parents, these little children. These are little children. Many of them were orphans or partially orphans and neglected children. He was a real hero of yours, it sounds Without like. Without a question. Yeah. And in fact, in Poland, he is well known. There are schools, many schools named for Janusz Korczak. There is a museum in Israel called Yad La Yaled. Half of the museum is about Janusz Korczak and his children. Wow. We don't have too many sculptures in America of Janusz Korczak. Yeah. But I hope we will have more.
Treblince funkcjonowało dwa obozy. Jeden obóz, tak zwany obóz pracy, Treblinka 1. I on był przeznaczony głównie dla Polaków, ale też przebywali w nim Żydzi. I on powstał już latem 40, 1941 roku. Później, na wiosnę 1942 roku, wybudowano obóz zagłady przeznaczony dla mordowania Żydów Treblinka II. Dlaczego tutaj, w tym miejscu? Ponieważ w Polsce żyło bardzo dużo Żydów. Te wszystkie miasteczka tutaj w okolicy Treblinki to były na wpół polskie, na wpół żydowskie. Co najmniej 50% albo i więcej w tych miasteczkach zamieszkiwali Żydzi. Druga sprawa to jest tu odludzie. To jest, nie mieszkało tutaj za dużo ludzi. I jak gdyby trzecia sprawa to jest bardzo dobre połączenie kolejowe z Warszawą i Białym Stokiem. To były dwa największe getta na, tutaj na naszym obszarze. Up next, we visit the site of the infamous Warsaw Ghetto and learn how the memories of the victims still live on and inspire today. You will not want to miss this. Stick around. Over the past two years, 30 nations have been represented at the annual Christians United for Israel Summit in Washington, D.C. Israel supporters from across the globe joined Kufi in standing in solidarity with the state of Israel and the Jewish people. They celebrated and rejoiced at the night to honor Israel. And some have requested that their countries follow America's lead and move their embassies to Jerusalem, the eternal, undivided capital of Israel. Now, with over 7 million active members, Kufi is the largest, most ethnically diverse pro-Israel organization in the U.S. As we, along with Kufi UK and Kufi Canada, expand our reach into other regions, including Brazil, we are excited about the future of this movement for such a time as this. For Zion's sake, we will not be silent. From all over the world, from every nation, we are Kufi. Well, Joanna, we are talking today about Treblinka, that notorious death camp, but we can't tell the story of Treblinka without first telling the story of this place where we are standing right now. Where are we and why is it so important? Yes, take a look first on the material. Granite blocks, supposed to be used to build a victory arch for Hitler. No. 1948, Nathan Rappaport decided with the survivors of Holocaust and also Polish state to build monument dedicated to Warsaw Ghetto heroes and victims of Warsaw Ghetto. So we are standing in front of the eastern part of the monument. They were marching from the ghetto zone, where we are right now, to Umschlagplatz. 300,000 people within 62 days. That is the estimated uh, population that were sent to Treblinka. So Warsaw Ghetto was inhabited by 350,000 people plus 100,000 that were sent from outskirts here. So in total, the highest number, the highest population that, uh, that were located, relocated here, 450,000 between 1940, 1943. All three in years. a small space here in Warsaw. Yes, 3.5% of total area of the, of the city. So if I'm right in miles, it will be 1.3 square miles for nearly 450,000 people. So you don't need to send people to extermination camps because you have diseases, starvation. One year, 100,000 people died here, not in Treblinka. Right here in the Warsaw in the ghetto. ghetto. Yes, yes, correct. After two years of starvation, we are so weak, let's imagine, we are so weak, we are so desperately hungry that if somebody will promise us, go to the square, Umschlag, Platz, gathering square, you will receive some food and drink. That's the middle of summertime, extremely hot temperature. We have July. 
And that's the beginning of the extremism of Warsaw Ghetto. I mean, the transport to Treblinka started exactly 22nd of July 1942. So two years after, uh, after the ghetto was established. Yeah. This kind of uh, scenario uh, that was given by Nazis to, to distribute among, among uh, inhabitants of the ghetto, yes, there's true information. You are going to be resettled, there's another camp, and you will survive. That was the trick, to make them eager to believe, to follow orders without any revolt, without any consideration. This is not a true scenario. So how did it work now? The, the, the Nazis took these poor Jews uh, from the Warsaw Ghetto and they marched them not far from here to cattle cars, right? Exactly. We are standing in the former Jewish Ghetto, but the beginning of the extermination started in the Umschlagplatz zone, the deportation square. So no cars, no wagons, they needed to walk to the square and with all belongings, again, you are going to be resettled. Take what you have. Men, women, children. Everybody, let's, let's go. Take a look on the monument that we are standing. There is a face of faces of people that are marching yeah. uh, to the direction that the, uh, that the soldier is showing them. No, uh, no revolt, no any chance to say, I'm staying here. Yeah. If you stay, you are killed here on the spot. So the, the brand new museum uh, that was awarded in 2016 as the best European museum consists exactly with the testimonies of survivors as well, giving them possibility to put uh, like a red light. Yeah. Be careful, do not repeat the history, do not follow the evil, uh, yeah. do not be followers of uh, ideology. So yeah. that's a center of dialogue, center of uh, education, but also insight into understanding how we are connected. Uh, Poland doesn't exist without Judaism, Jewish population. We were just very yeah. much connected. Coming up, my final thoughts on why Treblinka still matters today and what Christians can do to make sure it never happens again. Don't move. From terrorists who would annihilate her with bombs and bullets, to so-called activists that would eliminate her with boycotts and sanctions, Israel's enemies are on the march. In Why Israel, you will learn how to be an active defender of the Jewish state, knowledgeable and powerful, as you stand up for truth. You'll receive the biblical evidence proving Israel's special place in God's plan. Learn how his steadfast commitment to his people is a matter of fact, not opinion. From its miraculous rebirth as a modern state to the dangerous threats it presently faces, Israel's inspiring journey is laid out in this short booklet. Supporting Israel is a biblical mandate for all Christians. In Why Israel, you will discover why you should care about the Jewish state and what you can do to stand with God's chosen people. came to you this week from the Treblinka death camp, but we're closing the show from Auschwitz-Birkenau. You know the name, Auschwitz. We will be right here next week for part two of this very special Watchmen series from Poland on the horrors of the Holocaust and why they still matter today and why you, yes, you need to know about it. You know, Anti-Semitism and Jew hatred is the oldest phenomenon in the world, stretching back from Pharaoh to Haman, the Philistines, the Romans, up until the Nazis. It never ends well. God means what he said in the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verse 3, when he says that he will bless those who bless Israel and the Jewish people, and he will surely curse those who curse Israel and the Jewish people. The Nazi regime is long gone. They're dead and buried but the people of Israel live. Against all odds, the people of Israel live. But folks, don't kid yourselves. There are people and regimes today who want to repeat 
what happened here at Auschwitz-Birkenau, at Treblinka. But that's where we come in, you and I. We didn't have a voice 75 years ago. Today, we do have a voice at Christians United for Israel. You see the website, you see the phone number there on your screen. Call or click and join our movement today. Make a difference. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, one of my personal heroes who perished in the Holocaust at the hands of Hitler's hordes, said not to act is to act. Meaning, if you sit there on your couch and you say, what a sad thing, it's so horrible what happened during the Holocaust. It's such a terrible thing what Hamas, Hezbollah, ISIS, and these genocidal forces today are doing to Jews and Christians. You can say that, then you could go about your daily business, or you could do something about it. Join us now more than ever. If not us, who? And if not now, when? So thanks for joining me this week at Treblinka. Come back next week to Auschwitz-Birkenau right here where I'm standing. Folks, you need to hear this story because if you and I don't warn a future generation, don't share the truth about what really happened, no one else will do it. So until next week on this very special Watchmen series from Poland, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.